department of marketing management. She is also in the process of completing a PhD in online consumer behavior. Simona has been meditating for six years and she has been with the Brahma Kumaris since 2018. And as I say, I have the great fortune and opportunity to introduce to you Simona, knowing her journey and knowing in this challenging time as she been through many challenges, how she faced those challenges, the tools that she used to move on. And today she will be able to share with us the tools that helped her grow and develop and overcome the things that she did overcome. So warm, warm welcome, dear Simona. Uh, just to unmute. Sorry. Thank you, Sister Shirley, and good morning to everyone. Yes, a very, very good morning to you. So welcome. Thank you for giving us the time. And uh, as um, I've mentioned, yes, um, knowing that you've been through a journey, you worked through many things, um, many challenging things, and how you've uh, healed yourself. So please um, share with us what does healing firstly mean to you? Okay, so... Um... For me, I think when I embarked on this journey, it wasn't a conscious decision. Um, a lot of things started coming up subconscious, subconsciously for me. And um, that's when I realized, you know, something is unsettled within me. And because of that feeling of feeling unsettled and experiencing emotions where I didn't understand where it was coming from, I had wondered, you know, where are these emotions coming from? Why am I experiencing these emotions? And I think when I started reading about healing and, you know, listening to podcasts or listening to people talk about their journeys, I... I felt like healing was a destination. I felt like, you know, healing is the point that I need to get to in order to be fixed, in order to um, not be experiencing the feelings I had at the time. Not really understanding that healing is actually a journey. And the, the idea is not to get to a place where you are completely healed and completely fixed. I'm not sure if that's really ever possible in, in this day and age, but I think we are constantly changing and we are constantly growing. And so healing is, is not the ultimate goal. For me, healing has shifted from beyond just working on what I feel within me that's unsettled or what some of the emotions that I'm going through and the situations I'm going through at the time. It's not so much about fixing those situations anymore for me. Um, what I've realized is that it helps you to become the best version of yourself. And it's an ongoing process. And for me, for as long as I am alive, I will be continuously healing in my journey. So um, it's shifted a lot. The definition of healing for me has definitely shifted from um, it being a final destination to it being a continuous journey and something that I am integrating into my life on a daily basis to work towards becoming the best version of myself. And even that, in a sense, 
for me cannot be the ultimate goal because I'm constantly changing and growing as a, as a person, as a soul. And so at the end of the day, I think that I had to adapt my mindset and understand that healing is not where I want to be. I don't want to be healed. I don't want to be fixed. Um, when I shifted that belief system to understanding that it's an ongoing process, it's made everyday life challenges, situations, relationships feel a lot more um, easier to tackle. And I don't necessarily look at why this is happening to me. I look at what is this doing for me? And once I, I shifted that mindset um, from being a victim or blaming and you know feeling sorrow and, and suffering in my emotion, once I changed that into what is this doing for me, it became a whole different experience. It became um, a whole learning journey for me. And that is where the healing started for me. Very powerful, uh, Simone. Uh, yes, it is a journey. And uh, that mindset that you've changed, that was so powerful because then you don't put so much pressure and stress on yourself, nor you don't put much pressure and stress on your relationships and free yourself from that expectation. That was very, very powerful. That's very powerful to know and to change that mindset. And uh, it is a journey, lovely. And uh, what are the tools that you um, incorporated in your healing journey, perhaps, if you want to share some of the tools that you've used in your healing journey that will help us? Yes. Um, thank you for that question, Sister Shirley. I think, you know, when I was trying to understand what healing was theoretically it seemed great but to put it into a practical sense was the challenge for me and you know the tools that I would like to share worked for me um, it might not work for everyone or you might have to find some ways to adapt using the tools to suit you but um it's difficult for me to say when my healing journey began. And I, I like to think of it as not like it started in 2018 when, but rather the first step. And I think this is a tool that we can also use to sort of initiate this journey towards healing is firstly being aware of the situation that you are facing. If you are currently experiencing emotions or you are experiencing challenges in your life, um, you need to shift from the mindset of why is this happening to me to what is it doing for me? And to get to that point, the first method or approach that I had to teach myself was to look at what's happening from a detached place. I think when we are going through, um, you know, challenging times or experiencing difficulties in our relationships, we become very caught up in the emotion. We sometimes spiral. Um, some people experience anxiety, depression. You know, that's a whole culmination of emotions that haven't been processed. So when, when I was in these challenging situations and going through the emotions, I had to keep pulling myself out of that space and looking at it from a detached perspective to say, okay, I'm feeling angry perhaps, or I'm feeling a bit sad or frustrated. Why am I feeling this way? What is leading me to feel this way without putting the blame on the other person or without putting the blame on the situation? So for me, the first approach or method, I wouldn't call it a, a tool yet, but it must be a mindset shift from the beginning of looking at the situation as a detached person and saying, this is happening to me right now. 
what is this trying to teach me? It's trying to awaken something within me that has been maybe um, a very subtle trauma or subtle turmoil that I've been experiencing over time and have not addressed. Or perhaps it could be something that I'm avoiding, something that I don't want to face. And when those emotions come up, it, it's very, it's, it's human for us at this stage to, to get drawn in. But if we continuously allow ourselves to give into those emotions and feel self-pity or wallow in the situation, healing cannot start. So for me, the first step would, would be to become aware of what is happening and to then ask yourself why you are experiencing this to the extent that you are. We all experience things differently. Um, everything is subjective. And so we need to be very diligent with ourselves and disciplined in questioning ourselves. And I think you know, for some of us, it's challenging because we, we don't want to ask ourselves the difficult questions. We don't want to go inwards. We are fearful of what might come up for us. But really, if you build a relationship with yourself free of judgment, um, something, you know, a relationship where there is no uh, critique, where you don't put yourself down because you're feeling a certain way, um, and that comes from a point of loving yourself. So for me, first is being aware. And secondly, is being very kind and compassionate with yourself based on whatever comes up. It might seem maybe embarrassing for you to admit certain things about yourself in the beginning and to say, you know, I was wrong or I could have approached this differently or because of a past experience, this is how I'm thinking and feeling. Um, it's not easy for many people to do that, but it does take practice for you to put aside that, that judge who is always um, critical of yourself and, you know, what you're doing wrong and rather look at it with compassion and love and say, yes, I've been through this experience in the past and this is what has led me to this point. So how then am I going to use my past experiences and what is currently happening to me to propel me in a way where I am going to achieve and reach or, or be on the journey to achieving the best version of myself. So that would be the second sort of method. So awareness and then having kindness and compassion towards yourself. I think when those things work hand in hand together, there is a sense of understanding that comes into play. And once you have that sense of understanding, kindness, love, compassion, acceptance become a lot easier within you. Okay. So well, I'm just uh, wanting to find out, um, Simone, uh, you know, <clears throat> you spoke about being kind to yourself at that time and dealing and going through the process because uh, I know sometimes for individuals, it's not all that easy to be kind. One can punish the self, one can be hard on the self, one cannot accept situations. And, um, and because of that, one doesn't ask uh, and reflect on the right kind of questions to take one through the process. Um, any specific uh, methods you use to bring yourself to that stage of, uh, you know, compassion, caring, understanding, and accepting, and being kind to the self in the midst of dealing with situations, which is so important. Thank you, Sister Shirley, for that question, and I. I must say that um, I was one of those people and I still sometimes catch myself in that negative self-talk when something uh, goes wrong or when I'm faced with a challenge. And it is tricky, especially if for, you know, 
the, the last few years of your life or however long you've been here, you've been that harsh critic on yourself. But I realized that if I continued in that mindset of being harsh or being judgmental, of criticizing myself, there was no room for me to grow. There was no room for me to look at what is valuable within me. I could not find my sense of worth with by continuing to have that negative self-talk. And I think when, when I was faced with, with challenges in my life, there were particular challenges that would come up repeatedly. And I used to be a, a victim of that and ask, you know, this has happened to me before. Why is it happening again? What's going on? Um, I don't have the strength to deal with this. I can't believe this is happening. But when I look back in retrospect and at the time, I kept having that repeated negative self-talk when the, I was faced with those situations. And unknowingly, I didn't realize that the situations kept repeating itself because the lesson hadn't been learned. So a lot of ourselves find um, that we are placed in the same situation or similar situations and we fall victim to the situations and we engage in that negative, harsh self-talk constantly, not realizing that it actually presents us with opportunities to shift the mindset. And I think for me, I had to really kind of introspect on the belief systems that led me up to that point of feeling that I had to be so negative towards myself. And once I understood those belief systems, and it's going to be different for everyone as to why you judge and, and criticize yourself. Um, once I understood that that's not necessarily the way I should be thinking. Those are not the belief systems I should continue having and carrying throughout my life just because it was what I learned or what I was brought up with. I have the power to change those belief systems in a way that's going to benefit me. So when I understood that I had the power to change these belief systems and I didn't have to succumb to what I had been taught, that's where the light bulb went off for me and I said, but now I have a choice here. And I think we forget that. We forget that when we are placed in difficult situations, that we have a choice in that moment because we revert to those old belief systems of I'm not worthy, um, I'm not good enough, I, I can't do this. You know, we go back to that because that's what we've been conditioned to feel. But when I started using and implementing the power of choice, as difficult as the situation was, it took a few, maybe a few days for me to get into that mindset properly. Um, it's not something that happens overnight. And I, I can tell you now that I'm still faced with situations where I do fall into that slump. But I think the important thing is that you can pick yourself up out of that feeling faster than you did previously and better than you did previously. So the tool that I would say helped me be more kind and compassionate to myself was to see myself as this soul, as a point of light who is unique and different to every other soul on this planet. And that I'm here with my own unique qualities and I bring things to the table that other, other souls do not. And that sort of empowered me to tap into that innate nature within us that we all have, which is love and peace and compassion and kindness, and just bring it out. And I must say that another tool that helped me with that and that helped me with healing in general was meditation. And, you know, when I started meditation, I wasn't really sure if I was doing it right. I wasn't sure if I was experiencing what I was supposed to. There were times when it was it was just blank. You know, I wasn't feeling or experiencing what I thought I should. But once I let go of having those expectations of what it should feel like, 
what it should be like. I then started actually feeling who I am. So it's about when I did this meditation and when I started meditation and the last two years, my meditation has been a lot more focused on healing. Um, that's when you, you know that something is working for you. When you can sit in your space and you can feel some sense of peace and calm, irrespective of the adversities that you are experiencing at the time, then you know that it's working for you. You don't have to go into a trance or you don't have to get tingles and butterflies all the time or you don't have to visualize light around you if that, that doesn't work for you, you know? Everyone's experience is going to be different. But I must also say that bringing in the power of God or a higher, you know, any other higher power really helped me because at the points where you feel really low and you're not sure how you're going to get out of it, you're always looking to someone or something else. And for me, the only thing that helped was to look to God and absorb that light and love within me. And that's how I grew in terms of my kindness and compassion. Thank you so much for that powerful sharing. We are uh, a bit short of time. We seem that we've come to the end of uh, our session. And, uh, but just lastly, I would like to ask our, um, our friends if anything that you would like to add or, or just um, a quick comment or any question, I would uh, give you an opportunity to, um, yes, one quick question we could have perhaps to Simone. Okay, so uh, yes, thank you very, very much for that powerful sharing and um, the tools that you've left us with and uh, that what worked for you so powerfully and uh, what uh, you experimented with and worked for you powerfully, but also um, uh, on the aspect of meditation that uh, not to have any expectation and allow that natural flow. Thank you. And thank, thank you, so you Simone. Thank you very much. Take care and uh, wish you well on your journey of healing you. and empowerment and uh, keep touching the lives of others. I know that you do that in a very powerful way. Keep sharing. Thank, Thank you, you all. Okay.